Welcome into the Roaring Repeater podcast here on 7220sports.com. I'm your host, Cody Tucker, joined as always by Jared Newland from downtown Cheyenne, our beautiful studios. It finally looks like spring outside. Dare I say sunny outside, Jared. Uh, the sun, <laughs> Coincidence? <laughs> the Sundance Wicks era is underway in Laramie, Wyoming. What were your initial thoughts when it was announced, yesterday officially announced? Yesterday, um, okay. So I was not surprised. Um, there was two people on the list that were on your list that I thought would be just right for the job, you know, yep. type of the deal. And one of them got the job, so... Um, you know, he he was here just less than or right at a year ago this month, pretty much, or yep. even, you know, 12 and a half months ago. So uh, he's very familiar with what's going on currently with the program, with the administration and um, and what needs to be done at a school like Wyoming and a Wisconsin Green Bay that's in the mid major ranks that are just getting poached left and right by the bigger schools because of NIL money. Hence why a certain coach Jeff Linder left and yep. um but yes we all know there there's a lot of things that need to be done four years under Jeff Linder he leaves with a 63 and 59 overall record 32 and 38 in Mountain West play uh, obviously came here during covid the heat of it literally that day he signed his contract and the whole world seemingly went to hell uh 14 and 11 that first year he brings in the Mountain West Number one recruiting class, uh, I still bring this up often, Jared, because it's so hard to believe. Those guys were earmarked for Greeley to go play at UNC, the Graham Ekes, the Marcus Williams, those kind of cats. And it's really hard to believe, and it really shows how Jeff Linder could recruit. None of us can ever take that away from the guy. He knows how to recruit. Uh, he parlays that. You could feel the momentum building that year. Though they only went 14-11, and 7-9 and nine in conference play, you could feel it building then they turn that into a 25 and 9 campaign, 13 and 5 overall in the Mountain West. They go to the Division 1 NCAA tournament first four in Dayton, Ohio. Uh then they return everybody but Drake Jeffries. So in my mind, I'm actually kind of thinking sweet 16 or bust at this point. And bust it was 9 and 22 overall, 4 and 14. Graham Ike never leaves the bench. The entire roster leaves. Uh, Jeff had a lot of personal problems that year, family family issues, um, obviously the unfortunate passing of his father. Grammy K never plays. Uh, injuries galore. And Noah Reynolds sustains enough concussions where they feel like they need to bench him. Uh, the three California transfers that everybody was so excited about, they leave the program abruptly in early February. Before and in all game. honesty, never panned out. Never panned out in the first place. Um, was a complete nightmare. And, and we're talking such a nightmare that I think people forget – how deep this got. Uh, assistant coaches had issues that year. Surgeries, uh, deaths in their families. I believe Sonny had a death in his family. Uh, Sean Vandiver had to have a surgery. Um, they get they get a charter problem or a plane problem coming home from Arizona. They have to bus home for Christmas from Arizona. Uh, they take a bus home from Colorado Springs from the Air Force game. They get stuck on 287. They all have to move to one side of the bus so it doesn't go down a cliff. Um, it was any and everything that could go wrong all the way down to Sundance Wicks coaching in the Mountain West Tournament because Jeff Linder was home with his ailing father. Uh, the worst of the worst could happen that year. Then you lose everybody. He com- including Sundance. Including Sundance. Then you rebuild. And I thought, you know, they went 15-17 and 17 last year, 8-10 and 10 overall in the Mountain West. I thought Jeff did a fantastic job last year. I re- I, for what he had going, I thought it really worked out. However, getting the one and dones as much as we liked those players, Aquel Cott, Sam Griffin, Mason Walters, they were one and done. So nobody got to know them. You, you knew they were gone after this first year. It went to it, – it, it, it drew no excitement. There was zero excitement. This, this program right now is in Death Valley. I would say maybe worse off because of NCAA rules or lack thereof than when Allen Edwards was fired five years ago. Yeah, I would I would agree with that, and that's hard to say. <laughs> Isn't it? It's very hard to say, but now, you know, Alan Edwards didn't have to deal with Portal, and he didn't have to deal with money and, and all that kind of stuff. So, uh, Jeff Linder, I, I know Tom Berman, and I want your thoughts on this, Jared. Tom Berman gets a bad rap for some of his hires uh, since he's been the athletic director. Basketball-wise, to me, you don't put Jeff Linder in the bad hire category. I, I think he really... He did, he did quite a damn bit while he was here and considering the circumstances. Um, 
was he the guy who raw rod and shake shook hands and kissed babies? No, and I think eventually that was part of his downfall. And you can almost equate Jeff Linder to Dave Christensen personality wise. Yes. Obviously knows the game. Obviously, like Dave Christian was Christensen was a offensive mastermind. And but being a head coach is different than being an assistant coach, and we've seen it before in football. And not saying that Jeff has only been an assistant because he's proven himself at the head coach level yeah. prior to this, but it's kind of similar to that. Mm-hmm. He's a hothead. Yeah. There's no there's no getting around it. He is a hothead. And we've seen it on the court. We've seen it um, during games, at timeouts. <laughs> he's been kicked out of games. Yes, he has. Um, and he, his personality – He's probably going to be a great top assistant coach Agreed. at Texas Tech, and they are going to be better for having him there. Yep. Uh, there's no doubt about it. Um, they're just things that people can't do along with coaching that they need to do to be a head coach. Yeah, be perfect. My my buddy uh, Brady Hole, who has a show down the whole report down in Colorado, we spoke about it today earlier. Um, he kind of said, is it fair to compare this to Jay Savell and his hiring? Because – Let's face it, Jay has a lot of Craig Bowl in him, but where he doesn't is the parts where we feel Craig was deficient. He was the CEO. He knows football inside and out. He's a veteran. However, he's not a, hey, let me go lift weights with you. Let me, you know, ask about your parents every day and and joke around and, you know, listen to the same kind of music and that kind of guy where you feel like, and I'm sure his door was open, but it didn't maybe feel like it was open. And and I feel like Jeff might have had that too. And and we heard uh, Jeff actually talk to Craig. They actually leaned on each other a little bit because they both had to make changes because they were so old school. But you kind of are who you are, right? I mean, you can't do a 180 or it's even more weird. Like, what what is wrong with this guy? I mean, you are who you are. And you, may, you said it perfectly. I think he's going to be a bang-up <laughs> assistant at Texas Tech, and it'll give him another – avenue to get back to a head coaching position down the road yeah if he wants to be a head coach i mean they always strive to be one and especially at a young age that jeff is yeah he definitely most likely wants to be one because there's coaches in their 60s that want to be a head coach again that we know yes (laughs) and um and you know larry shy a great example of that too he he was he wanted to be that head coach again after being an assistant again yep no doubt um but the, the whole situation of how it went down, it was very apparent that it was in the works for quite some time, yeah. that he and his agent had feelers out there. If there's a P6 jo- assistant job that fits me and my personality in the West, I'm probably going to go after it. And yes, yeah. he did work for this guy before. He has a relationship with him. That's how things work in the coaching world. But he probably would have went somewhere else too. Yeah. I think he just wanted out that bad and and it shows that you know because i mean you can't you don't fire a guy for this because he resigns before he re, he fires but there was a lot of things and that's why it took so long the two three days to actually for a for the universities to actually comment and say yeah this is a done deal type of deal yeah and i haven't seen that it is not it, tech yeah tech no. hasn't released that hey this is what we're paying him this is this is his contract most likely it's going to be a three-year deal though. Yeah. A lot of assistants get three to five-year deals now along with their head coaches. But um, but it, it was apparent that it's been in the works, yeah. put it that way. I think it's a win-win. I, I really do. I look at it that way. Um, in the conversations I've had, which I would obviously not going to burn Jeff Linder, we've had a lot of personal conversations. Now when I look back on it, it almost reads like a resignation letter. It's all the reasons we can't win here. And – it was pretty apparent he he had a hard time. He didn't hide his disdain for, you know, being one of the have nots and not having a crowd. But he hid. Yeah. And that was problem part of the problem. Yeah. Because he wasn't a guy that was out and about. No. He went to functions that he had to go to. He wasn't doing thing on his doing stuff on his own. No. And And neither um, were his players. Yeah. And that's apparent too, because every single one of them took nothing but online classes. Hopefully that changes. Um, the COVID is gone. You know, as far as the regulations, you can be in classes and you've been able to do that for several years now. I don't understand why these kids aren't going to class. No, I don't either. Instead of just taking online classes. Why would you not want to? You have to live a college life. Yes. And part of that is being on campus, being seen by your classmates 
and just getting to know other people. Mm -hmm. Do you you know how many people I've talked to that have gone, especially at a place like the University of Wyoming, they go, oh yeah, Josh Davis was in my class sophomore year. And they remember the class. They remember everything about it. Did you ever say anything to Josh? No, but he was in my class. Mm -hmm. They remember that kind of stuff. Fans do. And if you happen to talk also and get to know people, they're going to be like, hey man, this guy has a vested interest. Let's go to the ball game. And right now, nobody knows these cats, man. They were here for like six months, yeah, and, and they hang out with each other. You might cultivate a relationship with them. Yeah. And it's, you're a lifelong friend of somebody, and maybe it's a former point guard or a former quarterback of a University of Wyoming, mm-hmm. and you're like, man, that guy was a good – he's still a good guy. We we stay in touch. Yep. Yeah, it's part of the college you experience. Know, my relationship's a little bit different with a bunch of former players because I was a trainer as well, but I also – got to know them better because I had classes with them. No doubt. It wasn't just because I was taping an ankle. <laughs> what a weird time, too. Like, does – I'm just throwing this name out there for the hell of it, but does Sam Griffin come back to Wyoming in 15 years and wave at the crowd and they announce him over the loudspeaker or people go, who the hell is Sam Griffin? Yeah, these one and duns are probably – that's a lot different, I would say, than somebody who would spent at least three years here. But and we talked about it, a guy who spent a couple, and you know, usually these guys get honored in some way for going to the NCAA tournament. Um, those guys aren't necessarily welcome back, are they? Is, does Graham Ek ever walk on this campus ever again Most and get a hand? Not. Most does, does Jeremiah not. Odin, Xavier Ducell? I mean, you're really seeing some images tarnished in some seasons that are like. I don't have any good feelings about that season because they're all gone, even though that's not fair to a guy like Hunter Maldonado. Well, depending on how the schedule rolls out this year, Dussel might be back here. Yeah, he will be. <laughs> Playing for Reno. He will be. It just yep. depends on, you know, if they're the – No, it's, all, it's 20 now. Everybody plays everybody. Oh, yeah. He'll be here. All right. I still think there's some work in – to do there with the Washington State and Oregon State stuff. Yeah. I still have a feeling there's something going to be. I hope so because they're Maybe playing they, in some. They would count for non-conference anyway, though. And Anyway. It would be a nice way to yeah. get a couple games because be. that's just one of the <clears throat> many examples Jeff had uh, about his how hard it is to compete in this league. And he, he would always preface things by saying, yeah, good luck winning in a league where six teams just went to the NCAA tournament. And I think Jeff saw the writing on the wall – that you know who gets fired after things like this when things don't get going in the right way? It's the coach. He gets canned, and I think he knew that, and he beat him to the punch, and he did Wyoming a favor. They don't have to pay. They didn't have to pay him out to to fire him or any of that good stuff. It's just, you know, hey, thanks for four years. Have a good life. And there's a very good chance that he's making more money where he is, too. Very, very much Most likely he is. Yeah. Um, or very similar, but he has less responsibility. He doesn't have to go to these speaking engagements. He's the one that's offering these kids the NIL stuff, but somebody else is out there pushing for it. Yeah. And right in the middle of oil country, it's cheap to live there. Texas tech's got a ton of money. Yeah. Oh yeah. Tons of money and they have tons of NIL money and they're a damn good program. Yeah. They really, they were in the final, they were in the final four just Three years ago, yeah, two years ago, whatever it was. Yeah, under Chris Beard. <clears throat> yeah, no, they got a hell of a thing going down there for sure. So I think it's a win-win. I think Jeff's going to be happy, uh, and I think Sundance is obviously thrilled. Um, people ask me, of course, were you shocked? Um, you're always kind of shocked when you see something roll across that, hey, Jeff Lender's resigning, going to Texas Tech. You're like, whoa, what? Surprise? No. I'm not surprised at all. I mean, he he's pretty much laid it out for you guys that <laughs> – you know, if you're not going to pitch in NIL wise, um, Cam Manios and Kel Combs aren't hanging around. And uh, also, I think it was too much of a crutch, if I'm being honest. I think it was way too much of a crutch. We've talked about it. Think of all these guys that have left. Uh, how many of them have left for paydays? Jeremiah Oden didn't. Xavier Dussel didn't. Nate Barnhart didn't. Not for that reason, but they did get paid. Yeah, Graham Ike <laughs> is the only one who you can honestly say NIL is the reason he left, plus exposure playing on a bigger stage. And let's be real. We've heard about it. Jeff's not the easiest guy to get along with. And if kids don't enjoy you, I saw one of his former players from UNC uh, posted a thing on Twitter a few days ago. Uh, Howie Long, the Howie, Howie Long's son, Chris Long, who played at Virginia has a podcast and he put out a thing saying, you know, basketball practice is for we for the week and it's easy to play basketball and blah, blah, blah. And this guy tweeted out and said, you've apparently never gone to a Jeff Linder practice before. He was tough. He was not budging. And uh, some guys like that. It pushes some guys. I know the Kobe Newtons of the world, the Hunter Maldonados of the world, the Hunter Thompsons of the world. That's three dudes. (laughs) A lot of guys have left this program. Yeah, and whatever tactic Jeff thought 
you know, he did in practices sometimes worked or didn't work, but he, he kicked people out of practice before the entire team one time and just flat out said, if you guys don't want to bleep and listen to me, I'll go bleep and coach in the NBA and be an assistant. Yeah. I mean, he, that's how tough he was. You know, he, he, he strives to be the best. Yep. I mean, he, there's no, he's, he's a perfectionist. Yeah. Yep. Tries, strives to be a perfectionist and he wants his players to be that way. Yep. But not everybody is going to understand the game in that mind of his and get it on whatever rep it is, including the media. Ex- Some, yeah. Sometimes he would sit and talk to us and I'd go, gee, I'd tell my colleagues, did you pick up any of that? Cause I don't even know what the hell he's talking about. Yep. And I'm no basketball guru by any stretch, but. And sometimes in a minute and a half time out, he's still arguing with the ref 45 seconds into it. So he's yeah. only got 45 seconds to actually get that across to somebody. <laughs> yeah, very true. <laughs> uh, I think they, they needed, uh, I wrote about it this week. I thought um, Tom Berman needed to make a splash. I thought he needed to 100% bring in a player's coach. Um, NIL is definitely the focus with them right now, and you can see that with the hiring of Ryan Thorburn and what they're trying to do in the sports information department. That's 100% the focus right now is NIL. I think he checked all the boxes with Sundance Wicks. If, if we're playing devil's advocate, I wanted to see more from Sonny. He was 30-32 and 32 at Missouri Western. Um, I understand that's not – you know, the big time by any means. And from what I've gathered, they were really not a good program. But he goes 30 and 32, 19 and 19 overall in conference. And then he goes to Green Bay and takes over a three win team the year prior, statistically like one of the worst teams in America, and uh, wins 18 games and gets all the accolades that go with it. Um, and deservedly so. I just wanted to see that a couple more years, I guess, because Noah Reynolds is now at TCU. Noah Reynolds was a huge part of that Green Bay success last year. He's now at TCU. I wanted to see what Wicks could do with his first real recruiting cr- class at Green Bay and do it for a couple more years if I'm playing devil's advocate. Well, now that that 30-day window officially opened yesterday for the Green for Bay one, players, yeah, yeah. maybe you'll see one or two of them. Is it the same kind of player, though? Horizon League's pretty damn good. I think it can, I, I think it can be very good. It's down mm-hmm. right now. I, I don't know. I don't know if it's the same kind of player. I don't even know if it's the same kind of coach. It'll be interesting to see what coaches he brings along. It'll be interesting to see if Ken DeWee sticks around. Uh, I know Ken, we spoke this week, he really wanted this job. Yep. And he didn't get it. Does he want to be? Does Noah Reynolds' brother come back to, you know, Yeah. With him? Does Reynolds' brother come? Does Does Ken stick around even though he didn't get the job? Uh, does the son even want these guys around? I mean, yeah. I don't I don't know. There's a lot of questions we're going to have answered in short order. Sometimes here. starting new yeah. is good. It's probably good for Ken. It's been, this seems like a drastic word, but I think toxic is kind of fitting with the way things have been. And it's not all just because of Jeff and the program. It's because of the NCAA and the lack of any institutional control whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Uh, That has just caused such a problem with everything. Well, when you mentioned NIL a few minutes ago, I wanted to make sure I brought this up because I'll forget. I'm getting old. Um, You had an idea a while ago about, you know, the roundup rounding up when you're checking out somewhere, hey, would you yeah. like to round up your to $22 even, 52 cents is going to go towards whatever charity. Well, the One Wyoming Collective has taken your idea, and oh, it's excellent. in action right now. Good. Um, the Brown and Gold Outlet is they're going through a test run to make sure it's, you know, the POS systems, all that kind of stuff work, and then they can do it. And then it's going to start being introduced to other businesses excellent. around – the region, you know, type of deal. It's a no brainer in my opinion. It is. And for a business, it's no skin off the business's back other than writing a check each month and just a little bit extra paperwork in the, you know, type of deal. So, um, I think it's going to be a good thing. Um, Wyoming will definitely get more money into the collective because of this, Mm -hmm. especially, um, if they get, you know, there, in my mind, there's no reason that a thousand businesses aren't Doing, doing this that. by the end of yeah. the summer. Yeah, I agree. And I've also heard that maybe a membership type situation is in the works to pay a yearly, monthly subscription, basically, yeah. um, which is another idea that and I thought was a banger. And it's got to be done, um, you know, within the guidelines and the rules and all that kind of stuff. And 
it, it will get there. So well, sorry to. When, no, I'm glad you brought that, that up track. because I don't know if uh, they've got their tax exemption yet. I mean, that's been a huge hang up. I don't think they have, but apparently none of these collectives were supposed to get that. <laughs> oh, in the very beginning. Oh, <laughs> so, maybe so that's that's why they're like, well, this. This one does and this one doesn't. How are you determining which one gets them and which ones don't? Well, apparently in the very beginning, none of them are supposed to have them. Yo. And now they're going the other way on it. So, hmm. you know, we'll, we'll probably have Mitch on again yeah. at some point just to kind of, I think he was on in July last year. Mm-hmm. We'll probably have Mitch Edwards on once again just to like maybe a one year. Hey, Definitely. how you doing and what's next? Yeah. And what so, are you finding yep. to be the biggest hangups? Another thing that it might be crazy and kind of just we're just wheeling here. Uh, I talked about it on the whole show earlier too. Sonny's going to be really great PR wise. We know that. We saw. It. I mean, I'm following Green Bay basketball on Twitter and I'm watching all their videos because Sonny is a star. He's killing it. The Cleveland Indians, yes, uh, oh. Major League oh, it's remake unbelievable. video was unbelievable. Yeah, it was. It was so good. And so look for some of those type of stuff coming out. On social media. It's great stuff. He is going, if anybody can get money out of somebody's wallet, I think it's Sundance Wicks. Plus, look where he's from. That is the energy capital of the freaking world up there. And I know, you know, energy's under attack politically and all that kind of stuff. But there's a ton of money in that corner, Still that northeast corner. That's made a lot of money. And you yeah. know they love Sundance. You know they're proud of Sundance. And and I would imagine that's a place Sonny's going to hit up soon is Campbell County. I just hope that Sundance doesn't jump off a cliff in Bolivia like the real Sundance <laughs> Butch Cassie and the Sundance Kid did. He would too, wouldn't he? <laughs> just don't make it like a 150-foot cliff. Let's just make it like a 25-foot cliff. I Sonny's got his work cut out for him, Jared. Uh, No question about it. Um, I know he has already called players. I spoke to a player the other day off the record. He's already made those calls, um, basically telling him, hey, this is what I do. This is who I am. I want you around. Um, Let's let's do this. So I think just his encouragement, his coaching style, and the way he is, you could measure that in wins, in my opinion. I think you throw a few more wins that maybe Wyoming didn't get this year that they could get next year just because of him mm-hmm. i really do i feel like you can measure that and uh he's a i mean he's got to put together he's got to put together a team here they've lost five guys we don't know if any of those five are going to come back uh, that had already committed to jeff we don't know but uh there's a lot of homeless kids out there right now and i think you could probably put together a hell of a ball club with the uh, names that are still sticking around in the portal definitely and if they don't if they're not signed here pretty soon they're going to be left yeah because as we've seen in the portal, there's a lot of people, a lot of kids that never even get a rost- get on a roster after going into that portal, and that's a shame. Yep. Uh, we looked, we talked a little bit earlier on the phone, uh, kind of what's Sonny's style? It seems like him and Jeff have quite a bit in common, especially on the defensive end. It really reminded me of what Jeff does against Air Force, what he does against San Diego State is he lets – one of their big guys or one of their guys shoot threes, leave them open, cover the hell out of everybody else, and let their worst guy take a bunch of open shots. And he may be, he may hit five threes, but in reality needs to hit about 15 of those for them to have a chance to mm-hmm. win. And that's what Wyoming's done against Air Force the last two years in a row. And we've kind of went, all right, when are you going to cover that guy? He just hit his 8-3. When are you going to cover that guy? Jeff was not worried. The other guys were doing nothing. Air yeah, Force that guy best hits players. eight. He would have had to have hit 16 that night. Yes. Yep. So. Because the other guys were doing nothing. So it sounds like he's got a little bit of Jeff in him as far as that goes. Offensively, I think they averaged around the same <clears throat> around the same points per game as Green Bay did last year. Um, Noah Reynolds was amazing. He, he was a 19-point-a-night guy. He was a rising league player of the year. So, I mean, he's a really good player. I would have been very interested to see what Green Bay did for an encore this year. But... Do they compete right away? I mean, I guess that's the beauty of the portal. They Maybe they can. Danny Sprinkle came into Utah State and competed right away, but he also had a couple of cats he brought with him that were superstars at Montana State. I don't think Sonny has any of those at Green Bay. Not that we know of. of. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, Noah, um, who's but, now in Fort Worth. Yeah, it, some of it's going to be who he hires, too, because there might be an assistant somewhere they can bring a guy with yeah. and so forth, so... Um, it's going to be interesting these next 30 days, really, to see what happens. And um, Well, I think we all can agree we hate the portal. But this is where you can make the portal really work for you, I think. Especially in a sport like basketball. Football's yeah. different. Yes. Because you need 
you know, a lot of more players to yeah. make an impact. Basketball, if you've got two guys mm-hmm. to go with some role players, you can be pretty salty. Which is what put them in the NCAA tournament yeah. two years ago. So I mean, I doubt there's a Graham E.K. floating around right now that's homeless, but nobody nobody thought Graham E.K. was going to be what he was. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's a lot easier to fix a roster in basketball. Um, and then if you start tacking on some NIL dollars as well, Maybe you go up a rung and you can get this guy or that guy. It'll be interesting to see what he does, but he has a lot of work cut out for him. Usually, we're dead this time of the year and we have nothing going on. And uh, but now we'll have a we'll have an exciting thirty days here of May to see what happens with this program. I'm I'm intrigued. <laughs> yeah, I, I was talking to somebody the other day. I won't mention the gentleman's name, but uh, we were talking about how Wyoming does needs to go about nil folks because old school way of thinking no i'm not paying the players but damn we can buy players now (laughs) i know (laughs) you know know. um but if if, i'm just going to take an example if somebody's a thousand dollar member of cowboy joe they're doing it to donate one but they also get benefits because of that they get a parking spot they uh you know get um better seating things Mm -hmm. like that so that's that's a reason to do it. Now, say if you're asked to give a thousand dollars to NIL too, well, no, I'm not getting any benefits from it, but I'm buying players. So, in our minds, the guy I was talking to, we think it would they need to go after people out of state more than anything, because those folks don't care about their benefits because they're only coming to maybe one game a year. Yeah. And I'm when saying come, out of region, item. put it that way. Yeah. Um. So if somebody in California. If they're making, you know, if they're a millionaire and they graduated in 1995, they love the pokes, but there's really no reason for them to donate to Cowboy Joe. Mm-hmm. Why not go after somebody like that? Hey, can you do 25000 for NIL? Yeah. Because you can buy this kit. Hell yeah, I want to be a part of that. Yeah. You know, if you can afford it. Yeah. I'll I mean, make you feel like you're definitely you know, like, have an impact on the exactly. game. Exactly. Like I can put cash in a bag and you can give that to a player now. <laughs> we can do that now. <laughs> <laughs> we're we thinking can do that blue chips, now? folks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Tractors, we're thinking, cars, houses. Yeah. We're thinking Shaquille O'Neal here, folks. <laughs> um you know, I think we can talk about it now a little more openly. Uh you and I have been obviously in communication throughout this whole thing. Uh Steve McLean really wanted this job. And I think you and I are both in the same boat that we would have loved that. We would have loved it. I think nothing against Sonny. Love this, too. I think it's a great hire. I think it's safe uh, safe and right. I think it, I think there's a lot to be said for that. Like I said, maybe I just want to see a little bit more. I want to just see a little bit more as a head coach. Um, but I'm perfectly fine with this hire. I have no qualms about it. Steve McLean, and maybe it was just getting nostalgic and all that stuff. And, you know, I talked to some former players that played for Steve, and they thought he'd be a great fit right now. And Steve really wanted this job. He really did. We had a lot of conversations over the last week, and he, uh, you know, he's obviously happy in Texas. He's had a great career. Um, I just think he saw this kind of maybe the same way Larry Shiat saw it. Just man, chance to go right some wrongs, go out on top, and uh, retire, go off into the sunset and uh, retire. So, uh, would have loved that. Would have loved to see Steve, and and it'd be interesting. I'm sure we'll never know, but I would I would love to hear if there was any even any consideration for Steve McLean. I'm guessing not with how fast it happened. Yeah. But then again, um, there there may have been some conversations for sure. Um, I too, yeah, Steve would have been great because I was I worked with him. He mm-hmm. he was always great to me, um, fun to be around, and obviously a hell of a coach. Um, one downfall I think is when he really wanted the Arkansas job, didn't get the Arkansas job. Um, then that spring he kind of left a couple holes unfilled in recruiting and then had to scramble at the last minute. Yeah. I think that was, might've been one downfall, but you know, you go back to that, that tournament run in Denver, he was going to be let go after the loss in the first round pokes win. He was going to be let go (laughs) the night after the second game and the third game semifinals. Even if he lost, they were going to let him go. I was there. Yeah. <laughs> I was in the elevator with certain folks um, on the way to the game, and 
sure as shit, they win the game, go to go to the championship game, go into overtime, almost beat San Diego State. Yep. Um, Steve Levin had a great championship game, just wasn't enough. Yep. And yeah. then he gets one more year. To me, something that will always haunt Steve, too, is not getting J.C. Carroll out of Evanston. And there's a lot of back and forth on that. I've heard Steve say, I called. I've heard J.C. on his own. I saw phone records. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and I've seen J.C. on his own podcast say, he never called me. He goes to Utah State and scores a million points. Uh, also, Nick Fizikis goes to Nevada. His dad played at Wyoming, I believe. Um, you know. Well, let's go all the way back to Adam Morrison. Yeah, 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 exactly. What were you thinking, Steve? You uh, know that he is a relative of Gary and Frank Crum. I do. So, yep, I saw anyway, uh, Adam Morrison at uh, saw him at uh, the Brown and Gold store before the opener last year against Tech. Um, so that's kind of unfortunately, if I'm thinking of the downside of Steve, that's what I'm thinking of. But um, he said something to me that I absolutely loved, and he had me ready to run through a wall. Was uh, you know when it's snowing and blowing in February and family's thinking about getting in their car and going to Laramie on a Tuesday night. They don't want to see you score 52 points. They want fireworks. They want to see you score 99 and win the game and run people into the ground. And he's like, <laughs> so maybe Sundance can have two offenses weekdays <laughs> in the eighties weekends in the sixties. How about a happy medium with, cause with Larry Shiat, I saw even some fans say, see if Larry would come in. No way. To me, that was the most boring basketball ever. It was a misuse of the guys he had on the roster, you know, grinding teams on defense like that. Yeah. They won one championship, but uh, in a tournament championship, that team should have been competing for regular season titles. In my opinion, when you have two superstar players on your team, like Wyoming did and Larry Nance and Josh Adams to only go to one NCAA tournament because you had a good weekend is criminal. In my opinion, um, I didn't love that at all. I, it didn't make me want to get in my car and drive from Cheyenne on a sunny day. And, uh, and that's just the truth. I didn't cover him at the time. Um, Steve did. I got in my one and only wreck on I-80 coming down the summit in a snowstorm from hell when they played Delaware State because I didn't give a shit who Wyoming was playing. That Wyoming team was can't miss. And talking to a couple of their players, they really got nostalgic on it too. And they were just like, Steve was great. We had our differences of opinion, but he let us speak our differences. He let us tell them. He was absolutely a player's coach. And they said he absolutely has my vote. And you saw it on social media. Chris, Chris McMillan, who's now an assistant at Central Michigan, he definitely vouched for him. And so did Uche and Sano Amati down there in Phoenix. And, you know, Uche's got a kid who's up and coming who's uh, – Who's a basketball He's stud? A big time re- recruit. Yeah, so um, I think Steve ended up here. Maybe that's a conversation we have that Uche's son at least comes up here for a year or two, and before you know, who knows? But I know, uh, I know, I definitely got on board with Steve there for sure. But you know, like I said, I can't say it enough. I think Sundance is a great hire. I really love the man. He's a he's a good man, and he's got. It's not. It may seem hokey and smoke and mirrors and shit, but he. He means it, man. He is so friendly and so nice. He's going to remember your name. This one reminds me a lot of Joe Glenn. Uh, <clears throat> the wins didn't come, unfortunately, but, man, he comes out banging on the piano and taking the bronze boot to every small town in Wyoming and knowing your name and shaking your hand. Uh, he, it was special. Yeah, and to be fair to Sundance, um, you know, maybe if you and I are both fortunate to be sitting in this chair doing this podcast three years from now, then we can evaluate yep. what's going on type of deal. But you hit it on the the nail on the head. I was going to say the same thing about Joe Glenn. He's got that yeah that juice so called yeah. <laughs> about it. But if you haven't read the quote, yeah. I'm going to read it to you here real quick because this is Joe Glenn. Yeah, right here. One hundred percent. But it's actually Sundance Wick saying this. If there is one thing I learned growing up in Wyoming, it's that when you honor the brown and gold, you're honoring so much more than the University of Wyoming. You're honoring every single hard hat that woke up before sun to work the coal mines. It means paying your respects to all the rough and rowdy ranchers that chose the cowboy way and rode for the brand before it became a popular phrase. Honoring the brown and gold is the understanding that a tip of the cap, a steering wheel wave, a hard handshake, or a big hug is how you lift your people up in support of of a hard day's work. I mean... Maybe he wrote, sat there and wrote that for a while before he actually <laughs> said it, but you know what? Who cares? Yeah. It's thoughtful. That's him. That's him. And he hit damn near every person in this state in one way or the other. Yep. 
and um, he's, he just won over a bunch of folks right there. Yeah. And you know what? What I love about Sonny, I guarantee, I haven't talked to him. I know he's a busy guy. I've reached out. We have not spoken. Um, I have zero doubt and zero qualms saying this. That had to be a gut-wrenching decision for him to leave Green Bay. As much as this is his dream job um, and to be home, he was fully bought in, and he has turned that program around. He made it his home. You could tell with the videos you were talking about and the videos we saw every week on social media, and I didn't know there was any Green Bay fans. I didn't know. You know, I didn't know. You couldn't have told me they were the Phoenix. I didn't know anything about them. He resurrected a bunch of them. He is what sure he did. did. He sure did. And we saw a lot of sad Green Bay fans. And uh, I have zero doubt that Sundance is sad, too. I really do. I think this is super bittersweet for him. Not like, oh, sweet, I finally got my dream gig. I think it's very bittersweet for him. And how classy for him to yes. release a statement talking to the Green Bay fans um, and actually it was classy for Green Bay to allow him to do it on their yep. social media networks. Yes, it was. Um, and then we see Jeff Linder do that as well, saying thanks for Wyoming. It just wasn't the same. Yeah. Put it that way. Yeah. And well, it kind of shows their personalities. Yeah. And it was after the fact. Yeah. And after. maybe it was because he couldn't do it. Maybe the attorney said don't do it until a certain time. But at the same time, it was. I'm with you. Yeah. I'm with you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, yeah, I'm picking up what you're putting down because I felt the same exact way. And I have no ill feelings toward Jeff. I We got along great. I thought he was fair. He was fair to us. Um, I thought people gave him a lot of crap for bashing on fans and stuff like that. I I call it honesty. Um, I didn't mind that either. No, you know, and some no. people took it the wrong way, probably. But you know what? He's right. He's very Especially right. Especially the people in town. Yep. Go to the damn games. I know. He was correct. He really was. And I, I kind of, I know Tom. I'm sure Tom Berman was cringing, but I wasn't. I said, "Man, this is refreshing to hear. I love hearing this. It's true. There's no students. There's no support. This place is dead on arrival. It's not fun. It's not a not an event. It's not good." I think Sonny's going to do any and everything he can to make sure this is an event. So I guarantee you Sonny's going to be going through dorms yes. and through fraternities and sororities to get some people coming to, to some games. Yes, he is. He might even be in the Pistol Pete outfit, <laughs> even though you're not supposed to know who's in it. He might do a whole day in the Pistol Pete outfit, and nobody even knows it's him. He might him. coach in it. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, great guy, great hire. Do we Do we put any weight into this season? Just to see how they start and how they finish. I th um, I think for me, I want to see the momentum build like it did during COVID under Linder. Yeah. Where you're like, wow, that kid's going to be good. Damn, that kid's going to be good too. Wow, they're going to be good. And, you know, depending on what that roster is come October 1st or September 1st, whatever you want to say, see how they improve. Mm -hmm. That That's going to tell you what, what kind of a coach Sundance is right there. Yeah. It's no how they improve from the beginning of the year to the end of the year. And conference is going to start in the beginning, mid December now because of those extra games. Yeah. So it's going to, it's that short period of time from November one to conference season. It's, it's, it's down 20 days. -ish. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I can't help this week, but think Jared about Tom Berman. He had to make two huge hires, the two money sports, the two, the two biggies. And now they're both led by two different guys that had to be – it's had to be quite the eventful last five, six months for Tom Bourbon. Yeah, um, but that's what he's paid to do. Yeah. You know, that's yeah. why he makes so-called the big bucks. Yeah. He is the head, the CEO of an athletics department, and those are the decisions that they have to make, whether it's firing somebody or making the right hire. And he, he'll be the first one to admit that he has made mistakes hiring yeah. coaches. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, they all have. Yeah, oh, yeah. Well, and how lucky was he, if in hindsight, that he had a coach that was here for 10 years in football? That That's never happened in the history of the program. Yeah, longest tenured head coach. And especially these days, those coaches that have coached that long, they're all retiring. Yep. Um, <laughs> well, in my opinion, the football team needed change. <clears throat> here it is. Jay Savell's hitting all the right buttons so far. The basketball program needed change. And Jeff Linder needed a change. And probably Tom Berman needed a change, too. Yep. And I think, I really do think that Jeff probably saw the writing on the wall that 
These are the kind of things, this turnover, and, 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 and what did Jeff do? He already signed three more guys that have one year of eligibility left. And that's exactly what Tom Berman said he didn't want to happen, and it happened. I, I think we saw a divorce in the beginning stages. I really do. And, and Jeff did too, and why get fired? Why get fired? Why not just say, forget it, he's going to excel at Texas Tech. Yeah, they it it you said it's a win win and it definitely is. Yeah. And we'll just let's wait and see now. Let's see who Sonny fills his staff with. Let's see who Sonny fills the roster with. And let's when they start practicing, you know, this summer and let then definitely when school starts. Let's just hope for the best and um let's support the guy. Yep. Give him as much support as possible to make this happen. Guarantee old Sundance will be on the field when Wyoming takes on Idaho in the uh, season home opener in Laramie. He will be front and center, I'm afraid. He might even be in Tempe. Yeah, he might be. (laughs) He might be. Uh, Yeah, so love it. Uh, Kind of putting a cap on the whole Sundance thing. I just, I think it's a, I think it was the right move. I think it was a good move. The fans seem overly happy about it. And, uh, you know, that's what you need right now. This this decision needed to put asses in seats too, just as much as anything, really. I mean, they are in they're they are in a bad way. They were eighth this year in average attendance, thirty nine hundred. That's of course not the number of people that were sitting inside the arena auditorium. Uh, it needs fixed. It's broken, and I think Sundance will get this back on the right track. I really do. I feel like it's going to be good. Uh, I feel like I'm personally, not that it matters, I'm excited about basketball again uh, because i got to admit, folks, there's times where it's like, please, Snow. I hate saying that. I hate even admitting that, but it's true. There's times you're like, just Snow. I don't even know who you are right just now. Just Snow and close the freaking highway, please. <laughs> I mean, that's how that's how grim shit well, is. Well, I've been honest with everybody before, too. I mean, there, there are days that I – just didn't want to go to the game. No. It was a Tuesday or Wednesday night. I'm getting back home at 10 o'clock, and, it's, and we're only 45 minutes away. Think about the folks who make that commitment. Rollins, Casper, yeah. Torrington. Yeah, they're not. <laughs> but the ones that did, I'm yeah. still like, what are you doing? Oh, I know. I know. Yeah. The few I meet that are still going old like that, I'm just stunned. I really am. And I just, thought I was about as brown as gold as there was, but, yeah. man, it's tough sometimes. Yeah, it is. And Jeff would mention to me off the record uh, that, you know, the crowds weren't good under – the crowds haven't been good since McLean left. And people can blame the seating and all that kind of stuff. It's just – it's not been a fun brand of basketball since Steve left. I think every coach, you know, I talked to Doug Gottlieb this week. He's very, he was very interested in the job too, as unlikely as of a candidate as he is. And he was like, "Dude, Laramie, why aren't these guys running people into the freaking ground? Why wouldn't you do that to a San Diego State? They, they may be the most athletic team in the world, but they're not going to be able to hang for forty minutes." Every coach has said they're going to do that, though. Aside from Shiat, in yeah. the last 25, 30 years, yeah, or even longer. And but when they get here and they then they see their roster that they, they really are only eight deep. You need to be about 12 deep to throw 100 up a game. Yeah. It just doesn't work out. Which back under McLean, you had guys who personally drove me nuts at the time, but now I have a ultimate respect for them. The Joe Roddinghouses and the Joe Reese and the Ron El Mingos and the Paris Corners. and You had some interchangeable dudes yeah. that could still run. Yeah, and they're going to give you the 18 quality minutes, not the 32 quality minutes. But yeah. anyway, it's it's harder to do – I mean, would I have liked to have seen somebody try to throw up 90 to 100 a game and run people out of the gym? Absolutely. If they could get 10 to 12 guys that could consistently play like that, yeah. that would be unbelievable to watch. I don't know if it's doable, though. Do you ever think like I do about, could you imagine Josh Adams and Steve McClain's offense running the point the way that Brad Jones and Brandon Ewing used to just get to the rack all the time? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> Josh Adams is a – is a unique player and a unique athlete because I don't know if the guy ever got tired. Oh, he was a freak, man. You know, so I the, there's there's those type of players are the the rare exceptions out there. I think he is literally a car accident away from being in the NBA. Oh, and being yeah. a staple in the NBA and making me actually watch the NBA because I cannot <laughs> do that now. Have you been paying attention to any of that? No, especially this last weekend. I I saw scores and stuff like that, but I was in Buffalo for a wedding. And um, I didn't watch one TV. Do you even bet on NBA? No. Yeah. No. 
Um, I'm just going to mention something it's to you fixed. today. <laughs> yeah, and sucks. Uh, I saw a uh, uh, thing before I came in today saying, what team should Justin Verlander go to at the trade deadline? What is what is going on in Houston right now? Well, he got a late start. He just was activated three weeks ago. Yeah. You know, the, the, the entire Houston pitching staff is just in shambles. How? And, but two years ago, they looked like the and, best staff I've ever yeah, seen. Well, some of them, they're not there anymore. Yeah. And Brett Strom, the pitching coach, retired. You know, Dusty Baker retires. Yeah. So it's a whole, a whole different regime. And it's hard to sustain Right now, success. it's not working out, but they're still only six games out. <laughs> yeah. Well, it just shows how hard it is to su- sustain success yeah. and what they've done is nothing short of incredible. You know, sorry, Yankees, but, you know, Houston has gone to four World Series in the last seven years, and they've been to seven straight ALCSs, so suck on that. <laughs> That's impressive, man. I know I wouldn't – I don't want to see them in the postseason ever again. <laughs> I don't want to see them in the World Series ever again. <laughs> Uh, baseball's been fun. Uh, the hockey playoffs are once again without my team, so I'm paying a little bit of attention, but nothing crazy. So it's a fun time of year for everybody. Um, definitely on the baseball train right now. And, you know, I'll, I'll watch the Nuggets when I get a chance to. I'm not going to go out of my way to watch the NBA playoffs, but if the Nuggets are on and I'm in front of the TV, yeah, I'm going to watch the Nuggets. Yeah. Um, but I'm not going to watch the Knicks. No. God, dude, the Knicks and Pacers are playing right now. Yeah. 20 years ago, you couldn't get me away from the TV. Yeah. Now I'm like, oh. And Reggie Miller's on the call for those games, too, Is which he even really? makes it kind of. Is Spike Lee still hanging in the front row oh, for the yeah. Knicks? Oh, yeah. yeah. All those games uh, were can't miss back in the day. But Nuggets, Timberwolves, 2-2 right now. Anthony Edwards is the next great star in the NBA. He is must-watch TV. That's what I keep hearing. Does he play defense and stuff like MJ, too? Nobody plays defense. <laughs> oh, it's so bad. My buddy Kyle watches this stuff, and I just sit there watching. and Because he has an invested interest in it. <laughs> invested right, Kyle? is the perfect word. <laughs> yeah, he sits. I, I remember we were watching the, the Nuggets Lakers, and the Nuggets were down by 20 in the third. And I'm like, this game's over, right? And he goes, no. I'm like, it's not. They're up by 20. Nuggets come back and win. Yeah. And you watch, Ant- what's his name, Anthony Edwards? Yeah. Or Anthony. Uh, Anthony Edwards. No, they're a big guy for the Lakers. Oh. Whatever the hell, the guy with the unibrow. I can't stand the NBA. Jeez. Who would think I'm a sports guy and I can't even tell you who the big guy on Anthony the Lakers Davis. is? Davis, yeah. He's walking back yeah. the other way. The other team is making it. Nuggets are making a layup and he hasn't even crossed midcourt yet. I'm like, what are, what are we yeah. doing? I just, I can't watch that stuff. Um, but what we are doing right now, we just started a summer series on uh, Wyoming football. The top 25 homegrown Wyoming Cowboys. It's kind of fun to look back through that list, wasn't it? See what kind of uh, – there's been some star, 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 like star of the stars It was hard. from Wyoming. And um, somebody did reach out today like, how did you compile this? And I said, well, each – we each put 25 names down, ranked them. Mm-hmm. Um, one through twenty-five. Well, and I think we finished with what, like thirty names? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But um, so, but everybody that received a vote was given a point total. So if if you and I selected Joe Smith mm-hmm. as number one, that equaled twenty-five points. The twenty-fifth person on our list equaled one point, and then we tallied it from there. Yep. So um, it's it's all. It's all our opinion, and this is for fun. Nothing is official. This isn't the top 25 according to really historians, you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Kevin McKinney's the historian on our list, and so is Sally Ann, but Sally Ann never had a formal, um, you know, part of the university so, yeah. as Kevin did. So, yeah. you know, it's it was fun to do, and we, we do this. We've done this before, and we're going to keep doing it because yep. it's fun. And um, But so – you know, obviously let your opinions be known, but don't bash anybody for how, because you don't know how we voted. We might tell you if you want us to, but we're not going to at this time. Um, well, but, and I, I think you got to trust who we put together yeah. on this panel. You know, you, me, Ryan Thorburn, Kevin McKinney, and Sally Ann Schirmer. That's a lot of Wyoming football. So who else, who else are you going to get? Dave Walsh, maybe? Uh, other than that, I mean, I think we, Kevin was there way before yeah. Dave. Yep. And Steve Weekland probably. Yeah. He wrote the... Um, you know, the book when Wyoming football turned a hundred. So, yeah. uh, but yeah, it's, it's for fun too. It, yeah. It's there's, 
these guys, we're not giving them a plaque or a certificate or a gift <laughs> gift card because, hey, you're number one. Go drink a beer here. Yeah. You know, it, it's all for fun. And and really appreciate Gale Construction out of Cody, Wyoming to be our sponsor for this because without them, we probably wouldn't be doing it. Yeah, no doubt. Um, because we do need to, uh, you know, to to pay for the pay the bills here on seventy two twenty sports dot com as well. Yeah. No, it's cool. It's fun, you know, and it's a good way to get through summer while we're still keeping Wyoming football in the front of our minds uh, because, you know, we, with all this basketball news, you know, we do have what I believe to be a really fun, entertaining fall ahead for Wyoming football. So excited for that. Excited to – now I'm excited for basketball too. I'm excited. I mean, I remember last year. I mean, this is how – this is really how bad it gets sometimes. And just being transparent with you, when Wyoming got the Arizona Bowl, my first thought was sweet. Now I can focus on football all the way through January 1st. And basketball, yeah, you write a story about the game, you know, yada, yada. We'll wait to focus on basketball because it just wasn't compelling. Speaking of the Arizona Bowl, new sponsor. (laughs) All you haters of Barstool Sports, they're out. Even though it was on linear TV last year, you guys were still complaining because the (laughs) the announcers were not up up to par. Now it is the... Gin and Juice Bowl, presented by Snoop and Dre. Will they be on the telecast? I didn't read that far. Cause... No, but they did say it's going to be linear TV. Okay. What, why? I can almost guarantee you Wyoming will not be in the Arizona Bowl, but maybe here in the next couple few years. Who knows, though? It actually <laughs> it might bring – because Snoop already said he's going to be there in attendance at yeah. the game. Well, I saw Master P at the game last year. I wonder if they were courting him, too, <laughs> and he didn't have the scratch. He but, was carrying around cereal – but Dre and Snoop actually have a new canned drink, gin and juice, mm. out. So they're promoting. Is it actual alcohol? Yeah. Oh, okay. The actual drink. So Okay. Yep. So there's so many of those canned yeah. pre-made drinks now. So, But yeah. anyway, so that's way, and that's what it's about. And Snoop's been on a bunch of national, like he was on Stephen A. talking about it the other day. Barstool folks weren't on Stephen A. talking about the Barstool Bowl. No. It's. I think this is going to take it to the next level. If you can do that... With an alcohol brand behind you, why doesn't Coors and Budweiser and... Because they don't need to. All these other places have a bowl. All these other brands. They don't need to. I just, man, I, I would think that'd be like a in, feather in the cap. In their know? mind, they would, they're would. probably know that if they spend $6 million on a 30-second commercial during the Super Bowl, it's going to be better than giving a million to a bowl game. Yeah, because I was just thinking like, you know, the Coors Bowl at... Mile High would be awesome, and the Budweiser Bowl at the Dome in, in St. Louis and stuff like that would be kind of cool. And I wondered if there was ever something against doing that. Well, there for a while, there was. Yeah. I mean, the bowl games were the only NCAA event that you could actually consume alcohol at. Oh, uh, yeah. Because, but bowls were never run by the NCAA. Did they, they even were, have alcohol at the Las Vegas Bowl when mm-hmm. Wyoming played UCLA? I'm going to go out on a limb and say yes. I was 20. I wasn't 21 because yet. Because they had it for late. the 1996 <laughs> yeah, they WAC did. championship game. Yeah, they so, did. Uh, on but, one half of the stadium anyway. <laughs> but, uh, you know, there for up until 10 years ago, 12 years ago, NCAA tournaments, you would go to the uh, in Denver for a first, second round. You had to be in a suite to get booze. Ooh. You could not buy booze in the concourse. Yeah. Um, so glad we've evolved. You could, you, that's why a lot of times during NCAA tournament games, for the longest time, you still see it somewhat. Th- those first games, and you see a whole empty section because that's the next team's fans coming in. Oh yeah, they're still at their pregame event. Yeah, pregame. They don't care about the first game. Yeah, true. So, but now now you can buy it there, but the prices are so ridiculous. You might as well stay where you're at or stay in the parking lot. Well, it's kind of wild this year at the Mountain West tournament. Since Wyoming got bounced in the first round, I spent the second day just drinking beer in the stands and watching games as a fan. And you, did, you just told your employers you were doing what? Drinking beer. Oh, watching okay. basketball right, on day two. Ho- hopefully they're not listening. <laughs> uh, those beers were outrageous, but they, what was crazy is they kicked everybody out for this first session and then brought everybody back in after they cleaned. CSU was already, I can't remember who they were playing, but they were already like five minutes into the game before anybody got in that stadium. Well, it was because of that double overtime? Or mm-hmm. was it a double overtime yeah. game? Or two in a, two overtime games in, in a, a row. row. Yep, yeah. yep. Yep, so CSU, if I was a CSU fan, I would have been livid because they actually had fans for once 
at this one, and they didn't get in until five to seven minutes, I think. We're off the clock already in the first half. Couldn't happen to a better team. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm sitting there drinking beer watching their team. I think I needed a day off after watching Wyoming blow an eight-point lead with two minutes to go against one of the worst teams on earth that they just beat by 40 on the road. <laughs> so... If I need to send that to the boss, there you go. There's my excuse. Um, <laughs> well, you know, just a few other things. You know, congrats to the women's tennis team. They played in the NIT for the second straight year. They did get bounced. Um, the weird – tennis is weird, college tennis, you know, because they play doubles first and you earn one point. So if you win two of the matches out of the three, you win one point. And then they go into the singles one through six. Well, it just depends on where they're at in those matches and who finishes first. Wyoming was actually winning those, the matches in the number one seed and the number two seeds. Oh, but they lost the other ones. Oh, okay. <laughs> so it's just it's just weird how that happens. But that it's consistent across the board. That's that's the rules. Yeah. And then uh, the men's golf team is playing in the uh, Invite Collegiate this week. Um, and then uh, track and field just wrapped up uh, the outdoor championships out in Clovis, California. And then the select few will be moving on to the uh, regionals coming up. So. Where is regionals? Do you know? Is it in Austin? Um, and then they do Eugene. I think then Eugene's question. always the championships, right? Uh, not always. No, oh. not always. They they do move that around because when my niece's freshman year, it was in Austin was the championship, and that's right. The regionals that year was at A uh, and M, I believe. So. Well, and the Cowgirl basketball team picked up a familiar name in Peyton Muma, who spent her first few years of college basketball at Gonzaga. Uh, and she was heavily recruited by Wyoming at the time, and most likely it came down to Gonzaga and Wyoming. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I texted the, the dad right afterwards, Ty, and he goes, hey, thanks a lot. Um, you know, she's back where she, you know, she should be and then hoping for to wrap up her career on a high note type of a deal. And yep. she was the uh, she was the second rated recruit out of the state of Colorado her senior year. They should have a hell of a team coming back. Wyoming Cowgirls should be I don't know what UNLV's situation looks like. They've been obviously the team the last couple of years in the league, but uh wouldn't be surprised to see Wyoming getting some first place votes in the I preseason. Think the player of the year from UNLV graduated. Um because I think she was being considered in the WNBA draft. Yeah. Good. And don't ask me how I know that. <laughs> uh, back to track. The regionals are in Fayetteville this year. Um, It'll be nice and cold there. <laughs> <laughs> nice Humidity, and, folks. Nice and cold, yep. All right, well, uh, let's do this again soon, Jared, after uh, we don't know yet when Sundance is going to be introduced to the media. But, of course, uh, we will be there and uh, be reporting live from Laramie there. Um, we'll come home and talk about it. Get some clips, play some clips here on the uh, podcast, and uh, I have a feeling it's going to be an emotional, it's going to be exciting, and he's going to have everybody ready to run through a wall. He will bring the juice to the <laughs> podium for sure on uh, on press conference day. Well, we'll bring the juice ourselves here soon, so uh, let's... Uh, the let's gin and juice or just the juice? Well, I only drink cores. <laughs> you can have whatever juice you want. Let's do this again soon. Uh, everybody have a good week. We'll see you next time.